given f of x, if g of x equals the absolute value of f of x, then the graph of g of x is the graph of f of x with every part of f of x below the x-axis reflected across the x-axis. Let's consider the function shown here, which is a cubic function. Looking at the table of values first, we have the x values or inputs in the first column, the function values in the second column, and the absolute value of f of x in the third column. Notice where f of x is negative, when we take the absolute value of f of x, the result is always positive. Graphically, this means if we want to graph the absolute value of f of x, we need to reflect the parts of the graph of f of x where f of x is negative across the x-axis. And now let's take a look at this graphically. Let's first highlight the parts of the graph of f of x where f of x is negative. This would be where the graph is below the x-axis, which is this piece of the graph and this piece of the graph. So now, if we want to graph the absolute value of f of x, all these negative function values will be positive, which means that these pieces of the graph are reflected across the x-axis. So looking at the graph of the absolute value of f of x, if we reflect this piece of the graph across the x-axis, we get this piece of the graph of the absolute value of f of x. And if we reflect this piece of the graph across the x-axis, we get this piece of the graph of the absolute value of f of x. Notice how for the graph of the absolute value of f of x, the graph will never be below the x-axis because that's where the function values would be negative and this is the graph of the absolute value of f of x. Let's look at one more example. Let's say we're given this graph of f of x and want to graph the absolute value of f of x. Again, let's first determine which parts of the graph where f of x is negative, which is this piece and this piece because when a graph is below the x-axis, the function values are negative. To graph the absolute value of f of x, we would need to reflect these pieces across the x-axis, again, because we are taking the absolute value of f of x. If we reflect this piece of the graph across the x-axis, we get this piece of the graph of the absolute value of f of x. If we reflect this piece of the graph across the x-axis, then we get this piece of the graph of the absolute value of f of x. I hope you found this helpful.